In this video we are going to look at making a skip stage system for our obby. So let's just get straight into it. First of all we want to create a button just on the screen that the uh, player can click and it will prompt them with a game pass purchase and they'll be able to skip the stage with Robux. So let's go under starter GUI and add in a screen GUI. A screen GUI is just a sort of, uh, well it is what it says really, it is a GUI which appears on the screen. Uh, you can put multiple uh, UI elements in the screen GUI so let's click add and add in a text button if you'd like an image button or uh, which shows an image you can go for that it's the exact same concept you just add an image uh, so you could go to add add an image button and add an image in here if you want uh, to learn a bit more about how to use user interface please check out our little our mini user interface series now I'm going to rename this text button to skip stage and I'll drag it to where I want it. So I want it on the left of the screen because that just makes sense, doesn't it? I'm just going to make the buttons uh, size of 0 0.1, 0, 0 0.1, 0 actually, uh, just because what that will do is it will stop the button staying the same size as if we go into a different screen size, it will stay the same size. Again, more on that on our little mini series I did. Uh, you can check that out, the link will be in the description. Obviously, your user interface, play around with it how you want, but I'm going to make it 200 by 69 because I'm trying to get that to 70. Okay, 200 by 70. I'll just make the text say skip stage. Um, maybe make it a little bit bigger. I'm just going to play around with some of the UI elements and I'll get back to you in a second. There we go, I'm pretty happy with that. So what I've done is I've just changed the background color to a light blue, made the text white, uh, changed the font to Fredoka 1. That's the one I like. I've added a UI corner with the radius 0.20. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks pretty good. Now what we need to do, just before we do any scripting, we actually need to create our developer product because we need a developer product to actually uh, pay Robux for the skip stage. Again, I do have a video on developer products. So if you want to learn more about how they work, go check that video out. Um, but what you want to do, head over to create.roblox.com. We're going to head down, first of all, view as yourself, or if you're on a group, you want to click this and select the group. Uh, but I'm not in a group. I'm not making this game as part of a group. It's part of my own profile. So I just want myself selected. I'm going to go down to creations, and I'm going to find the game we're working on, which is the first one here for me. And I'm just going to click on it. Next, what we'll do is scroll down to monetization, and under monetization, we want to click on developer products. I'm going to hit create a developer product. And in here, we can upload an image if we'd like. Oh, I'm not going to give it an image because I don't have one on hand. And I'll just call it uh, skip stage. You can give it a description if you want. Again, I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to make it 15 Robux. I think that's pretty reasonable for a skip stage. And I'm going to hit create developer product. Now that we've actually got the skip stage uh, product amongst all the other uh, products I've made over the uh, over the course of the YouTube channel, uh, we can hit the three dots and hit copy asset ID. It, you should get a message that prompts asset ID has been copied successfully, in which case we can go back to Roblox. Now what I'm going to do, just, for this, uh, just so we don't um, sort of forget this ID, I'm, I'm going to, in the command bar that we... Um, looked into last video if you don't see it go to view command bar i'm just going to right click and paste the id that i've just copied and just enter just so it's in this chat just so i've got a uh, record of it now what i'll do is i will go under the skip stage we actually need to create a local script in here in this local script we want to get the marketplace service so we'll say marketplace uh actually that'll be one word marketplace service equals game colon get service marketplace service this just gets the marketplace service uh, we'll get the player is game.players dot local player we can do this local player because we're in a local script if we're in a server script a normal script uh, we can't do game.players the local player it has to be on the local script because the local script runs on the player so it knows what the player is the server script won't know what player we're trying to specify next we're going to get our product ID uh, which we've pasted into the command bar. If you don't have it copied anymore, just go back into your output because we put it in the command bar. We can double click it and copy it again. And now we're going to create another debounce, which we've explored uh, in the obstacles video. I'll set that to false. 
uh, when we made the disappearing parts. So if you want a bit more information on the debounce, go back to the disappearing parts timestamp in the creating the obstacles video, which I believe is the first or episode part two of the series. Now what we'll do is call a function when the button's clicked. So we'll do script.parent because script.parent, that's our, our skip stage button, dot mouse button one click, colon connect, function, and we're not going to pass anything into this function. Now again, we'll do if debounce is false then, just doing our debounce stuff, uh, which we've introduced previously. Uh, now what we need to do is actually check if the stage is less than num the number of checkpoints in the game because we don't want to prompt them to skip the stage if they're on the last stage of the game so if you've got 100 stages and they're on stage 100 there's no next stage to skip to so we don't want to prompt them to skip a stage if they can't skip a stage so we'll say if player dot leader stats dot stage dot value is less than and then we're going to use the hash key the hashtag workspace dot checkpoints colon get children with this capitalization exactly and this will just uh, check if the stage is less than the number of checkpoints that's what this hashtag means the hashtag just means number of so the get children this will get every single checkpoint in our checkpoints folder so there's eight stages in the game there's eight checkpoints if uh, and this hashtag just gets the number of them so the number eight so if our stage value is less than eight then uh, we want to prompt the product purchase so to do that we'll say marketplace service colon prompt product purchase passing in the player and our product id and this prompts the player with the purchase otherwise we'll drop down do a backspace to uh, de-dent a little bit and just say else uh, and we'll reset the debounce now we're not going to reset the debounce after we've prompted the product purchase because this means they could, um, well it, it opens the possibility if their computer's fast enough to spam the spam click the buy button while it's processing and it might skip more than one stage at a time which we don't want. So we only want to reset the debounce once the product has finished being purchased and to do that we'll say marketplace service underneath this whole thing we're going to call another function dot prompt product purchase finished colon connect function and in here a few arguments are automatically passed in so as a parameter we want to add the player id the product id and uh and is purchased it doesn't have to be called all this exactly i'm going to name it is purchased it's just a boolean state which tells us whether or not the product has been purchased it doesn't matter to us whether or not it has um, all that matters is that the product has been finished so whether it's been cancelled or has it been purchased it doesn't matter because we just want to reset the debounce so say db equals false and this just resets the debounce we just have to pass these in because they're automatically passed in as arguments so we have to have them as parameters now we can close the local script and we can actually test this if we hit play uh, it won't do anything yet, but if we hit skip stage, it will prompt us with our game pass. It should say buy skip stage, because that's what we've called it. Uh, 15 Robux, the amount of Robux I set. It doesn't do anything, but we can purchase it. Um, it doesn't reset our debounce either, and the reason for that is because we haven't returned any state as to whether or not the marketplace service, the product has been finished purchasing or not. We have to do that in a server script, which we're going to do next. Now, in our checkpoint handler, we want to add some code to actually do something with this product. Underneath the uh, run service, we want to get the players as well, which is game colon get service, player service, uh, not player service, sorry, just players, uh, and the marketplace service, which is game colon get service, marketplace service. We also want the ID, so I'll say product ID equals, and paste in our product ID. Now what we need to do is call a function when the receipt is being processed. Now to do this we'll say marketplace service dot process receipt equals function and in here we automatically the receipt info is passed in so we need receipt info as a parameter. 
and this is a function that will be called whenever the player purchases the product now we need to get the player from the user id that's been passed in as a part of the receipt info so we'll say local player equals players colon get uh, player from, from uh, get player by user id receipt info dot player id with capitalization exactly like this so i want the p capitalized and i want the i capitalized the d needs to be lowercase it has to be like this now we'll just make sure the player exists so if not player then uh return enum dot product purchase decision dot not processed yet so if the player does not exist we want to return the decision that the product has not been processed and of course this return into product purchase decision returning that will call this function here because the product has been finished being dealt with so this gets called when we return a product purchase decision now underneath this we want another if statement uh, we want to check if the product id on the receipt is equal to the product id of our product so if receipt info dot product id again exact same uh, capitalization uh, formula so capital p capital i lowercase d equals product id which is the one that we've stored up here as a variable then we want to increment the stage value so player dot leader stats dot stage dot value plus equals one and then we want to load the player onto the correct checkpoint now luckily we have a function for this that we've already created in the last video so say underscore g dot player loaded and we can call that passing in the player now under here we can return enum dot product purchase decision dot purchase granted which just returns the decision that the product was processed and the purchase was granted and that is it that's all we had to do okay so i'm going to hit test and play and just test that everything's working so i'll get to stage two myself and i'm actually thinking stage two is a bit difficult so i'm going to hit skip stage it prompts us i'm going to buy it and as you see it actually teleports me to stage three and now if i die just to make sure we respawn on the right stage yep we do perfect now let's keep going I'll get to stage four and I'm going to test it again just because I'm not feeling too confident with these parts. Uh, it'd help if I click the right button. There we go. Uh, and stage five. And when you're testing developer products, you are never charged in Roblox Studio. It's not actually reset our debounce there. Um, so that was glitched out a little bit. So I'll have a quick look at that. But oh no, it has. Sorry, it was just taking a little while to respond. If I just click that. It looks like the Roblox, uh, it's just taking a little while for it to respond. Okay, so if we die, so it does it once. Okay, so if we click cancel, it looks like it's not working. So we skip stage, do I click it again? So it looks like our debounce isn't resetting. All right, I'll just have a quick look at that. Um, so a bit of debugging, what I'm going to do is just print our debounce in here. Uh, every time the product purchase finished is called, just so I know whether it's resetting it or not. Uh, so we've got an issue here, connect. Oh, it's because I've spelt connect wrong in the function, that's why. Okay, I thought it was a bit funny that that wasn't working. Uh, I've spelt connect wrong. Right, let's try this again. That's what program is all about, just testing stuff. I'll do the exact same things as so stage two. Now I'll skip. There we go. Okay, stage three. Now if I die, I should respawn back at stage three. And then I'll just... What I'm going to do now is just spam the button. And you'll see we only skip one stage. Uh, skip again. Okay, now it's actually working. Uh, see, I spelled connector wrong. That's why it wasn't working. Perfect. Okay, brilliant. That is it. That's all we had to do this video. Uh, in the next one... Actually, I'll just quickly check that the last stage doesn't do anything. Now it shouldn't prompt us perfect and it doesn't yeah so in the next video we will look at the data store actually no that's a lie we're going to look at a progress bar which will visually demonstrate to you what level you're on and how many levels you have left to go um, it's just you don't have to follow that one it's just a little bit of neat ui that i'm going to add because it looks nice so i'll see you then everyone i hope you found this video helpful thanks for watching and goodbye